Hey, hey, Queen City Gaming fans. Welcome back, guys. Today we're diving back into the Beast Claw Raiders. Today, guys, we are looking into your War Scroll choices um, for the army. So, guys, just like last time, um, one of the main War Scrolls in here are your Beast Riders. Um, their main difference is really going to be the mounts that you take, and they're very similar to the, um, the Huskard and the Frostlord. Because uh, they're the same mouth, so they're either a Stonehorn or a Thunder Tusk. But guys, let's start off with the Stonehorn Beast Riders. They have 12 wounds. Uh, movement goes from 12 to 4 based off their wound count. 4 up save, 7 bravery. So 1 less bravery than the Huskard. So as far as weapon option goes, they're a little bit different. Okay. So a single model is armed with a Harpoon Launcher and Punches and Kicks. In addition, they are armed with one of the following weapons. Chain Trap or Blood Vulture. So, like we talked about with the Husk Guard, this is kind of where you can stack up those Blood Vultures to kind of snipe other enemy heroes in the background. Because that Blood Vulture, guys, for those of you who don't remember, it's a 30-inch range weapon. Basically, you pick a visible unit within 30 inches and roll a dice on a 2+, plus except for a Mortal Wound. Fantastic ability. You just have a bunch of Murder Vultures that go out and just kill off characters. So, super good. So, the Harpoon Launcher, which is the guy on the back, uh, he has a 20-inch range, 1 attack, 4 to hit, 3 to wound, D3 damage. Now, if you do choose to do the Chain Trap on the front guy, he has a 12-inch range, 1 attack, 4 to hit, 3 to wound, 3 damage. And then, for melee weapons, you have Punches and Kicks, 1-inch one one range, 6 attacks, 4 to hit, 4 to wound, 1 damage. Rock Hard Horns, which is the Stone Horn, horn itself, is a 2-inch range, he cheats. Range. He starts with 6 attacks and goes down to 2 at his lowest bracket. 4 to hit, 3 to wound, 2 rend, 3 damage. Overall, pretty good. And then Crushing Hooves, 1 inch range, D6 attacks. So, when we look back, um, were they all the same? Yeah, they were all the same. They were all always D6. Alright, 3's to hit. To wound changes from a 2 plus down to a 4 plus at uh, eight to nine wounds, one rend, D3 damage. So overall, guys, this is actually a pretty good little unit. Now remember, you can shoot in combat, even that blood vulture. But when you are in combat, um, your rain, your your missile weapons have to go into the unit you're in combat with. So the blood vulture can actually go off and do other things since it's just an ability. It's not a missile weapon, so it kind of plays around with that rule a little bit. So it has the Earth Shattering Charge rule, so add one of the damage inflicted by attacks made with the model's Rock Hard Horns and Crushing Hooves that this model made a charge move in the same turn. Overall, fantastic ability. Just like we talked about with the Frost Lord on um, Stonehorn, you really want these guys charging in. You don't want them sitting in the back just kind of dirtling around, to be honest with you. You want them charging in and doing that charge damage and getting these bonuses all right so the stone skeleton you basically have a five plus uh wound or mortal wound negation that's kind of standard on all stone horns now when we look over here at the thunder tusk beast raiders they're pretty much the same <laughs> all right now their move starts at eight and goes down to four though so they're a little bit slower but they also have the frost wreath ice ability just like the Husk Guard on Thunder Tusk and the Frost Lord on Thunder Tusk. Starting with 12 dice going down to 4. On a 6 you cause a mortal wound. You get plus 1 if the unit had more, or 10 or more models. Or plus 2 if it had 20 or more models. So overall a really good little um, ranged attack. It is only... Uh, uh. So it is only 18 inches. But still pretty great. All right, punches and kicks are the same. Colossal tusks are four attacks, threes to hit, uh, and then it changes from two going down to four plus uh, at eight to nine wounds with one rend and D3 damage. Overall, pretty great. Now, it has numbing chill, so you subtract one from hit rolls made for attacks made by melee weapons against this model. Pretty good. And then the blood vulture, which is, you know, the same thing. Overall, guys, these are pretty great either one you choose i, I kind of lean more towards the thunder tusk to be honest with you 
especially if you can only take one of the two. Most of the time, you're going to take a Husk Guard on Thunder Tusk as your kind of big support hero to help heal your monsters back. And this guy helps the Thunder Tusk get the prayer off. Or the Husk Guard on Thunder Tusk get the prayer off. So I kind of like these guys a little bit better. Don't get me wrong, if I could take a second one, it'd definitely be the Stonehorn Beast Riders. Because these guys can go charging in with your Frost Lord. And just... Oh, just absolutely wreck face. Just be a tag team duo of just I charge, you charge, we wipe them out with mortal wounds before they even get to swing. Great, great unit and great, great support to go along with your um, Frost Lord. Either way, guys, you can't really go wrong. They're kind of pr both pretty great. Alrighty. Now, we also talked in our last video about the Ice Brow Hunter. So he has this ambush rule to where he can basically appear anywhere on the table. Um, what is it? Uh, yeah, anywhere on the battlefield that is nine inches away from an enemy. And um, he can bring a unit with him. So he can bring a unit of Frost Sabers. So they're these guys over here. They come in packs of two, but you can upgrade or increase the number of models in the unit. They have two wounds, nine inch move. So they're a little bit faster than the Ice Brow Hunter, who only has a six. They have a six plus save and five plus bravery. They have elongated fangs, which are three attacks, fours to hit, three to wound, one rend, one damage. All right, and they have their uh, master's voice. So add three to charge rolls for this unit if it is wholly within 16 inches of a friendly ice brown hunter unit when this model, uh, when the charge roll is made. That's fantastic. That means you're going to come out of ambush with this unit, and they had to roll a six to get into combat. So really, really good. In addition, add to the bravery characteristic in this unit while it is wholly within 16 inches of the Ice Brow Hunter. So they go up to bravery 7, which is the same as your Beast Claw Riders and stuff. So overall, guys, these are fantastic. And it's actually the Ice Brow Hunter and the Frost Sabers are one of the cheapest ways to get a battalion in this uh, book. Um, overall, fantastic kind of double combo pair. I really see them being used a lot, mainly as backline harassers. Or, guys, if you take Frost Sabers, they work really good as screens. They're cheap, they come in units of two, so you, and they're the longer bases. So you can take two of them up and use them as kind of screens for the rest of your army. Oh. All right, so overall, great unit. Definitely get some really, really cool models, too. Alright, so our last, uh, is it our last unit? Oh no, we got one more after this. But our other kind of like beast unit is the Icefall Yetis. So four wounds, nine inch move, six plus save, six bravery. They have claws and ice encrusted clubs, one inch range, three attack, four to hit, three to wound, one rend, two damage. So they're really, really similar to our um, gluttons. So they come in units of three, guys. They have an ability of Aura of Frost. Just like the Thunder Tusk, you subtract one from attacks, uh, from melee attacks against them. So a pretty good ability. Bounding Leap. This unit is eligible to fight in combat if it was with... Uh, so basically, they... So this unit is eligible to fight in the combat phase if it was within six inches of an enemy unit instead of three and can move an extra three inches when it piles in. That's pretty fantastic, guys. Um, to a point to where you don't even have to charge. You can just get within, you know, four inches of an enemy unit and then it's automatically pile in. So, fantastic little ability for them. And guys, you're wondering why that's so big. You can't fail the charge roll then. So if they automatically pile within six inches, as long as you're within six inches of the enemy unit, you can pile in an attack and you have a much easier time getting into combat than having to roll your charge rolls. So overall, guys, fantastic ability. All right, and then Invigorated by the Blizzard. This unit can run and still charge later in the same turn if it is wholly within 16 inches of a friendly Thunder Tusk when the charge roll is made. So, and, and the, we'll, we'll talk about this in the War Scroll Battalions, but these guys actually have a War Scroll Battalion with Thunder Tusks. So they have synergies off of each other, and these guys are fantastic to go with them. All right, and our last unit, guys, are the Mornfang Pack. So these are your kind of, like, Rhinox Riders. Um, 
they're your standard ogres on your like large cavalry that come with the start collecting. They come in packs of two that can multiply. Um, the box only comes with four, so you actually get two units in the start collecting along with the the big stone horn, which is actually pretty good. So they have six wounds, nine inch move, four plus save, six bravery. Now the 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 unit itself is armed with the Culling Club or the Prey Hacker and Iron Fist or Gargant Hackers. So, where is it? Your unit leader is called the Skarog. Right, he is armed with the Iron Lock Pistols in addition to his other weapons. So the Iron Lock Pistol, guys, is a 12-inch range, 1 attack, 4 to hit, 3 to wound, 1 rend, D3 damage. It's not bad. The only ability... The problem, though, is it is literally just the sergeant that has this weapon. It kind of falls into the Iron Drake thing to where it has a really good weapon, but it's literally only the sergeant, so you only get that one attack with it. Um, and hitting on a four, it's not going to hit that often. <laughs> so it, it, it's a great little bonus, but I wouldn't rely on this to win you a game. Okay? Now, it can, they can take a horn blower, so one in every four models in the unit can be a horn blower. Add one to the charge roll for this unit uh, while it includes any horn blower. So now, if the unit is a minimum of two, you have to take four before you can start taking these command options. And then the banner bearer, same as before, one in every four, and you add one of the bravery characteristics of this unit while it includes any banner bearer. So these guys are really designed to take, really, as a minimum of four rather than that minimum of two. Now... As far as melee weapon goes, the Culling Club or Prey Hacker is a 1 inch range, 3 attack, 3 to hit, 3 to wound, no rend, 2 damage, not bad. Then the Gargant Hacker is 2 inch range, 2 attacks, 4 to hit, 3 to wound, 1 rend, 3 damage. Gross. Um, it is kind of a trade off, but I really like the Gargant Hacker over the Prey Hacker. Um, and then you have the Tusk, which is a 1 inch range, 4 attacks, 4 to hit, 3 to wound, minus 1 rend, 1 damage. Now remember, if we take the Huskard on Frost, on a Stonehorn or Thunder Tusk, we can use their command ability to upgrade that to 3 damage when we charge in. So overall, guys, something you really want to do. And you, this, the Beast Call Raiders are all about these synergies with the characters and with the other units around them. So you really had to pay close attention. All right, and then the Mornfang charge, add one of the damage inflicted by attacks made with a tusk if this unit made a charge move in the same turn. So let's check wording just to make sure. Okay, so it changes this. So the Mornfang charge goes to two plus two damage to make that a three. It's not an addition, so it doesn't change this to a three, and then you get this as well, making it a four. No, it just changes this to plus one damage, so it goes up to three in total when you charge, which is the Mornfang charge rule. So you kind of had to do pay attention to that, but overall, guys, this is a fantastic unit, and it's a good overall baseline unit. Uh, it comes in the start collecting, along with the big Stonehorn Thunder Tusk model, which, you know, you're going to want those you you're probably going to buy three start collectings to build your army and then you're probably going to get uh, uh the ice brow hunter the frost sabers and the ice fall yetis when you can overall guys these are some fantastic war scrolls and a really really cool dynamic army to play i really need to get mine painted so i can get it on the table but guys overall a great great faction to play and some really really cool war scrolls with some cool abilities and cool synergies within the beast call of raiders um come on back next week go though guys we're going to talk about uh the war scroll battalions and the bonuses you get from them all right you guys this is queen city gaming signing out folks